the subsequent things are a matter of more for the what you call understanding the record is what I was talking to you about if two surface temperatures are equal temperature distribution simplifies to parabolic distribution. Okay. So, we have all these uh, you know expressions which can be easily be evaluated provided you know things like L you know the uh, things like you know various other you know the amount of uh, uh, area and uh, so on. Now, from here onwards cylinders and spheres with heat generation are the ones that manufacturers have evaluated based on chip geometry. That is how they are able to make high power per electronic chips otherwise you cannot imagine something which dissipates uh, tens of kilowatts I mean it generates tens of kilowatts by understanding the geometry they are able to evaluate cylinders and spheres in a radial system as a with internal heat generation occur in current carrying bus bars, wires, resistors, flat circuit rolled into a cylindrical shell. It is very much possible he has given an example here which is generic saying uh, you have wires and resistors. So, you two would have noticed if you have a copper conducting wire which is put a concealed wiring in your building inside your copper on top of it you have usually a simple PVC. At the moment you bring it out the same thing if you keep it outside it can carry a higher current two things first of all you have convection which takes place all the time. Secondly it is not looped and confined like this things change a lot when you want to make an underground cable you have usually two more sheets around it the you have the basic insulator then there is a on top of it one more anchoring uh, what you call metallic or plastic things are on top of it usually one or two other waterproofing devices are there these things the heat carrying changes, but then on the outer surface we have earth. So, things are there and then depending on the conditions they they would have done a test saying in the case of loose soil or in the case if it is in concrete or in the case if it is under a pavement uh, meaning a road uh, what is the heat carrying capacity in the case of a length of it. These things are evaluated using the thing here if you have a length of resistance of the what you call material. So, let us say you have a underground cable in the case of in India where we live we have a 230 volts usually 15 amps peak rated 2 wire system to our homes. So, we have 15 amps peak in the moment you say 15 amps peak usually a uh, factor of safety of 2 is there. So, the most of the things are designed for our 30 amps with 230 volts input does it matter the 230 volts yes or no because right now if you are considering heating it is only the length and the heat dissipation when 30 amps passes through as you increase the cross section obviously the resistance comes down and the total amount of internal heat generation is less. You have a very thin uh, section or if there is a kink or some dents formed you see that whole thing will come down. So, we have this uh, relations here how these things work. So, I will just move it saying uh, this is more in a general thing. So, you have here conduction in plates and walls I suggest since these are expressions which depend a lot on uh, this heat transfer coefficients and uh, the directions and all that all you need to do is like shown there before you have several contact surfaces and then uh, a composite plate uh, with temperature dependent thermal conductivity say very important thing thermal conductivity itself is sometimes dependent on the temperature 
I have shown you a plate which is used in a mosquito what you call repellent coil. That heater there is made with a ceramic which has a 2 or 3 slope temperature coefficient. So, when the temperature changes the heat transfer coefficient also changes in it. So, they are all generic cases uh, meant for thoroughness of uh, what you call of analysis you have a large number of these things. And here is where no you you can use this as a handbook so that you can get back especially you are one of those people who are trying to write your own code and understand for every what do you call typical case of uh, a heat uh, what do you call thermal condition they have given the operational equations that are there thin rectangular plate on the surface of a semi infinite solid seen this no that is in relation to the total mass of the the heat generating device this outside thing may be 100 or 1000 times you know one or two orders bigger. So, it is practically semi infinite solid. So, they have given examples of how the heat conducts here infinite thin plate with heated circular hole is what I was telling you if you have a strut mounted transistor. So, you have a inside usually it is made of copper. So, you clamp it and then you can treat it like if you are to have a large plate if you are having several of these things how these things behave. So, we have all these uh, you know relationship saying as heat uh, is transferred then with a finite plate how these things will do right now they have shown only steady state not rate of heating. Eventually, when the rate of heating comes into place you need next higher level of differential equations. tube centered in a finite plate. So, you have this you know width divided by this thing all sorts of conditions a large number of such things are covered here as I said this is more uh, to be treated as a handbook handbook information. So, where all these numbers you know are all mentioned here as you go down see you have more and more heat conduction nomenclature for long cylindrical wath where hinter generation in a differential element d r as the small uh, this thing what you call if you take a thin layer as it moves how the heat generation takes place. So, the subsequent things talk to you about various things of with the tubes and so on. So, you have rods, tubes, cylinders, discs, pipes and wires. So, a huge number of the tables explain to you how an infinite hollow cylinder works. So, in this case uh, you have <laughs> composite cylinder which is what I was talking to about the underground cable or the wiring cable where are these important these are important because in the case why it looks easy eventually your conductors and all and get bunched in an electronic equipment especially power electronic. So, what looks uh, very easy the moment you make it a bunch and it becomes uh, anything about 10 or 15 mm you notice that all these effects will come into place and uh, so manufacturers take a various things and then second thing related <laughs> is the insulated tube do we have insulated yes and you have seen here usually you know huge amount of 
calculations they are not important if you know a uh, little about all the surface conditions and then if you also know the way the k changes with the temperature it is possible for you to evaluate the expression. So, we have this whole thing huh, we are coming to more and more practical example. So, when these are embedded, embedded into another uh, what do you call another medium it could be a combined thing or it could be a pin fin heat sink you have a base in which you know you have these things and sometimes they may be different materials it is very much possible for us to evaluate things here. So, especially these things make sense I do not know if I have if you recollect. So, the next uh, thing if possible I will get back to the video which I have shown you. We have usually internally some structures inside which could be embedded uh, materials. If you recollect the phase change graphic which I have shown you there you have copper which is sitting in an aluminum. and some of the copper tube inside the copper tube you have the working fluid, but outside you have the copper which is again embedded into a heat sink conditions like this you no know, happen there especially on the surface of that. So, as you go down we have all this uh, more and more large number of expressions. So, I suggest you go back to the this things and then try to know how these things vary a lot large number of things come here while above so far one dimensional heat flow multi dimensional systems also in this case of multi dimensional you have this sphere you have seen that no and so just in one either the radial or in the actual direction you have things which will move in all the directions. So, you have several gradients and so on these are all the more important when we have transient heat phenomena as in if you have a switching device and then it is already sitting inside a finite uh, uh, what do you call material all this much of analysis is required for us to make this summation. But then kind you remember everywhere now they are able to reduce everything to a network of resistances it is very much possible for us and then you see here conduction in spheres I will just skip all these things. And read this if somebody says I am a new person who has started working and discovered all these things if he is holding an examination you believe him and repeat it and you will be surprised to see that it is about uh, nearly quite a long time ago 200 years back for year already made a analysis of multi dimensional heat transfer. Later on we had this Laps love transform arbitrary Fourier series and uh, accurate results, but important thing is time consuming you understand now nearly 200 years back in 1800 uh, in this case now they have mentioned uh, 20 that is just short of 200 years back. Fourier made this observation and also some analytical methods saying using this it is very much possible for us to we have this beautiful graphical methods also now which appear very intuitive you understand now these things 
look a little like things which are used in the other uh, fields. So, anywhere you have things of equal potential, it is possible for us to draw lines with the equal potential. So, we have here um, various types of you know what you call heat flow geometries and so on. So, you will see that whenever there is a you know little bit of crowding, you have these uh, what you call beautiful um, lines which are reasonably easy to plot. This lecture is not about plotting these things and all which are all available I am sure if you take a proper heat transfer uh, heat and mass transfer uh, course you will be able to solve these things. My interest has been how to take commercial uh, available devices and then try to work with simplified equation. This is what even Remsburg starts in the beginning saying while it is possible for us to calculate all these. So, in reality you have seen this read it. Equations can be used to find partial solutions to simple areas of very complex geometries. Analytical techniques provide a solution within the prescribed boundaries. Finite differences methods provide a solution only at a finite number of points within the problem and an approximation of the analytical solution and so on and so on. The cal using a finite number of points simplify the calculation to repetitive arithmetic instead of the complex involved with analytical solutions. Many texts devote considerable space to numerical and finite different methods. Computers are now used to solve this. We will concentrate only on broad view of the analytical techniques. You have seen that the man who sort of you know wrote, uh, wrote the book, he himself admits that computers can be used safely. So, you have here things like flow them and uh, several other computational things and if you are a student or a fresh to the field uh, engineer, you can probably download uh, beta versions or trial versions which, op which work with a few number of points and then uh, try to show you how to work with it. And then if you are part of a larger uh, this thing, if you are part of an educational institution, if you get into a proper uh, what do you call MOU with them, they will allow you to park those programs here. Uh, luckily for uh, where I am working, where I have you have worked and uh, where this is being recorded, uh, we have had access to this for a long time. And uh, only thing is even what is used for the educational purposes, it will allow you, it will allow me to you know teach the students and how to use them. And eventually when they go to the corporate sector or when they go to the defense electronic sector, they buy the original full package and why do they give it to us is now we have first hand experience in it. I have no experience, but my students know how to use it. The moment they step out and go to either a R and D lab or the other places, they buy the original. And as he says numerical and how to write the program is not given here. Computers are used to solve the problems of the complexity. So, succeeding lectures tries to explain how these things come including we end up with partial differential equations. Yes, I admit I am no good at it, but it does not mean I have a problem. We have help on hand. Uh, we live close to the, in fact, my neighbor is one of the top mathematics professors and he puts his students on the job and then beautifully we have all these expressions that can be easily evaluated. You have seen here. So, I am just to for the purposes of completion of reading these chapters, I will show you here saying 
even in the case when we have this and in the case of this how they is what you call isothermal points can be plotted and how actually heat flow lines can be shown. You would have seen these cross sections in fluid mechanics that they will show you a tube and beautiful flow cross sections are shown saying in the case of a what do you call turbulent flow how these things are and in the case of a laminar flow how these are. This thing also seem a little like this depending on the difference of temperature and the uh, this thing these isothermals behave a little like that. So, I will just keep going down you have seen this whenever there is a cross section like this what actually reality what happens. So, we have huge number of these expressions and finally, we come into more and more practical things saying shape factors. If you already know a shape meaning if it is a square and then we have an area and then we have uh, wall thickness and so on whether this can be directly used here. So, in the case of plane wall then concentric cylinders concentric spheres a large number of you see here this may be a reality in the case of a eccentric cylinder does it occur yes. Look at your soldering iron or I do not know we use the word a rod some people it is called a soldering iron how there is a heating element inside and then there is a sleeve outside. And we expect that the sleeve is in perfect contact may or may not be contact and it may be off center heating element may be off center. So, most known items are all shown here in this ok. In the case of a barrier rectangular box and uh, so on large number of for in the case of heat uh, this thing ok huge amount of this calculations and all are given here. I will skip all these things and come back to important thing we end up with transient conduction. Time for the system to reach a steady state saying non-steady or transient conduction such cases may occur when the boundary conditions change object is immersed in a different temperature at the variable internal heat generation which is the reality in the case of electronics. So, inside the heat is not uniform it is not coming out at the same thing it may be simple example it may be a sine wave other example it may be square wave and variants of all these things saying the if you have a pulse width modulated how these things will work. The temperature of the resistor will increase until there is an energy balance. So, example is resistor unbalanced system is the resistor with the sine wave input voltage temperature of the device will continue to change with the changing input voltage conditions. You have seen you have both if it is a sine wave we can do something and if it is a square wave we can do something as with PWM if you know the overall duty factor it is very much possible for us to evaluate this condition. So, this solid shows <coughs> resistance capacitive network. So, we have a huge amount of uh, what do you call calculations that are possible nodal resistance equation cylindrical and spherical coordinate systems it is very much possible for us to evaluate these things saying in case of you know you have uh, interior corners lumped capacitance problem a method the consider a microprocessor in a powered computer system operates in a steady state temperature we turn off the system and the microprocessor begins to cool we turn off the computer how the temperature decreases and so on. So, we have here 
very much possible for us to evaluate and come about numbers like this. You understand these have been derived from both the analytical thing and observed the biot number as a basis for determining the validity of the lumped capacitor model of negligible internal temperature is a measure of the temperature drop in the relative to the temperature differential between the object surface. If it is less than 1 lumped capacitor model valid and if we assume the internal temperature within the uniform. So, they have given rather uh, things are available for us for several of these things here. I will go through very fast, we will get come back to it later on. The extended fin of heat sinks are available in a variety of sizes. These are from here onwards no, little more practical things constructed of aluminum extended in arrays are popular in low cost extrusion and higher performance and more costly bonded configurations. When evaluating fin designs to decide whether simple fin shape will suffice or more expensive cross section is needed. In a subsequent we will explore convection, but in this chapter we will investigate the heat conductance of the most popular fin cross sections. The very first lecture if you remember I have shown you a, sl I mean a long rod like thing. So, you have this long rod at one side there is something and then uh, there is a heat generated and the other side it goes through the <coughs> method uh, we are thinking about as we go in you see we have this profile area the longitudinal fin called a straight or is has one dimension L that is in the direction of flow and is usually greater than the other dimension spine fin may be circular. So, we have all these various types of fins that are there okay. longitudinal spine fin annular or radial fin. The annular fin also called the radial fin follows a curved surface. In a fin of finite height optimize the fin geometry is necessary. So, that we conduct the maximum heat from the wall to the tip of the fin. We should maximum the conductance of the fin throughout the height of the fin. We can accomplish by using different cross sections. As we come down you see here we can accomplish maximum cooling of the wall if the entire fin is at the same temperature as the wall. We must weigh the shape, size and material of a fin against the cost of the array to meet the goal. We invariably end up with fin efficiency. It is not as if if you keep on randomly increasing the length of the fin or the depth of the cuts though we have more area only the initial about maybe one third uh, of the fin will be as effective as we have thought about the remaining two thirds the heat does not reach that surface. So, there is no temperature differential from the rest of the heat in surface to the ambient especially if there is a forced convection using a fan this is the one I have tried to show you earlier. So, if you go down here you will notice in the given efficiency average heat conductance and so on fin diameter and fin thickness it can be easily evaluated because extruded rectangular fins are long and wide and have a thin cross section. So, you will notice once again just like 
we have efficiency factors of wind shapes a lot depends on B and thickness. So, of a parabolic profile, rectangular profile, a triangular profile though for simplification he has put like that we expect that this whole thing is a parabola like this. In the case of a triangular profile he has seen this here oh I am sorry <laughs> it is rectangular with a little bit of circular thing at the side and then this is the actual parabolic which comes into a small thin shape how well these things can be calculated. In reality, you often find this and occasionally you find this. So, instead of it is being reduced directly into a sharp uh, what do you call point, usually you have a, a trapezoidal thing which I have tried to show you yesterday. So, in the case of annular fin and so on, similarly, you have seen this, this is a reference surface a spine. So, if you are talking about pin fins you have spine fin or a triangular profile a paragol parabolic profile. I have not seen these things it is rare one of the first reasons being these make sense only if you have the other side this is while this is conduction other side is a natural convective thing. When you have a what you call forced uh, convection usually the dealing with it is easier and it is very complicated to make which uh, such things. So, generally most of them they have a probably an aluminum or copper block and then fins are milled off and to make it easier it is extruded probably in one direction and then it is cut inside. So, arrays of rectangular or you know square uh, fins are more common. Longitudinal fins of rectangular profile and fins of triangular profile all the equations know these things have all been given here. So, I suggest you check See, he himself has acknowledged that uh, fundamentals of heat transfer from uh, FP, what do you call, uh, and these people they have given all these things nicely solved here. It is for you to, what do you call, see if it can use them. But in general, these are not. These are these are only used when you want to create a new configuration or make a optimum thing, as in the case of probably spacecraft. Because it's not easy for us to have a generic solution, and each is unique. Each uh, what do you call spacecraft and condition is unique. So it is worthwhile doing all these calculations for them. So, we have the about the surface efficiency and the contact resistance model. So, I will stop my lecture at this point and we will meet again starting from electronic equipment interfaces. So, far things have been very general saying in everything including in the case of uh, as I said no reactors or in the case of automobile or in the case of other heat transfer all those are valid. When we come to this electronic equipment things are slightly different in that the conditions are known. If I say take a, a TO220 you know typically how a TO220 behaves. Similarly, if you take a diode package or if you take a IGBT the internal constructions are known. So, thank you.